Um, so, so I, I feel like there, you just have a much higher likelihood of, of having very significant sexual trauma when you're talking about, um, a lesbian and trying to one and understand why is she trying to self obliterate? Mm, yeah. Why does she really not want anyone to see her as a woman anymore? And I say that as a lesbian yeah. uh, who, who, yeah. who went through it, you know, I, I've, I've thought about like, why, why was, was I so uncomfortable with just existing, you know? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. I I always kind of feel guilty. I'm really glad I didn't. I'm really glad that I preserved my body. I'm glad that you did. I really, really, really want want lesbians who are going through that to to preserve themselves. Well, I I heard something crazy, and this could be completely wrong, but I heard that the amount of uh, female gay clubs, so lesbian clubs, if you like, mm -hmm. has dwindled by something like ninety four percent because that sounds about right. Yeah, because they, we we are not them. supposed to exclude them, so it's like we right. can't really have a lesbian club, and then we don't really want to go to those clubs, and then right. if we go to them, people seek them out and feel entitled to come into them and yes. harass. And, um, there's also, I think, been the, because of the the the, the TQ plus propaganda like lgbtq plus propaganda there's there's this idea that it's kind of like an old school identity that's out of out of date in some ways so old-fashioned yeah and and yeah. not just like a a, a a circumstance that's timeless that you're not going to escape yeah you probably come to terms with that that that's the pattern yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah. um, this this and the idea that it's an identity and not just like yeah i, I hate the fact that they that include time. It's part of an identity, but it's not an identity. It's like, yeah, yeah. I, I don't, well, I'll, I'll ask you, like, do you find it slightly offensive when they include Jazz Jennings in the same sort of social group as you? Yeah, absolutely. I just, I, uh, I, I think that it's important for, for women's, like, almost like on a neurological level to spend time around just other women and feel mm -hmm. the differences in, in vibe. Like there is a difference I feel like in, in, in fe female attitudes and, and that, that can only emerge in a female only like supportive space and, and uh, where, where, where a new hierarchy is forming, but it's independent of like male hierarchies and, and mm. male attitudes of, of I'm in charge because I'm a male that, and, and the fact that of a male triggering in, in, in women, oh, the male must be in charge kind of thinking. And just yeah. separating from that, and then having to, to think again. I'm, I'm, I'm I, I really like, uh, for at least part of it, your educational career, the idea of single sex education. For that reason. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, I, and I had the benefit of, of uh, my, my graduate program being primarily female, uh, okay. taught primarily by females, and so the fact that it, that it was it was females at every level, except mm. for the chair at the time. Um, it, it just it challenged my thinking in a way that needed to be challenged that had just not had an opportunity to be challenged before. I was just like, oh wow, I was kind of misogynist in my approach to females and authority. <laughs> I feel like, and I feel like that that really got got uh, like I was forced to to reckon with with a level of, of recognizing of the competence of women that, that I just hadn't like needed to because I'd been able to rely on my own intelligence and 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 other other structures that, that they didn't control and could go go around any individual woman it felt like and so this was one a system where, where there was a whole power structure that was all female that then and, and everyone around me was female and mm. and it was just different was I just feel different. like I, I it challenged my thinking in a way that was important yeah I feel like I am misogynist to misogynistic to women in power and that's probably because every woman in power I've ever known has been extremely horrible. Power corrupts. It's crazy. My dad, when I was young, my dad said to me, no, you know, never judge your bosses by their gender. You'll find everybody's different regardless of their gender. And then he said, but the one thing you might find is because they've had to fight harder to get there, that some of the women will be particularly difficult. And wow, like, um, I, you know, this is just an anecdote, but yeah, there were, I, I'd, I've never been made to feel like more of a piece of crap than I was mm -hmm. by extremely powerful women. But anyway, such is life. Well, I, um, they, they, they made me very aware of the fact that I was beneath them in a hierarchy. And I think that was very important for me. Yeah. Um, because I, I was very arrogant when I first got to school. <laughs> and, and, and I had a, a corresponding lack of ability to imagine that they knew more than I did 
and I could <laughs> really, really, it was a lot easier if I just listened to them and stopped trying to figure out how to like, you know, do other things that I, instead of just like actually just, just, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to hard to explain, but I feel like uh, the I, I draw a connection between that and what Jordan Peterson says about lobsters, like yeah. relaxing if they're yeah. given antidepressants or if they're if they perceive themselves as higher up in the hierarchy, mm. and they kind of relax. So I feel I feel yeah. like that's part of the need for 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 female dominated hi- power hierarchies and and a girl having exposure to that and being subject to that. I feel like that's mm. important for on a neurological level in ways that we don't understand. But it's like yeah. you just need to see that that like. I just you need to see see representation. Yeah, I'm going to ask you a, a slightly difficult question, and tell me if you don't want to answer it. Um, but do you think? Um, the only reason I ask this because I have some turf friends, and I don't say turf as an insult. I think it's actually a badge of honor. Mm-hmm. Uh, that talk to me about this sometimes and we, we sort of have disagreements about it but yeah. they say that, that the old thing of uh, you know men shouldn't rape men shouldn't murder and I I agree but I just feel like with everybody in the world you know we've been saying it for 7,000 years and you're, you're never going to be able to get rid of evil people mm. or, or people that do evil things yeah, I have I have I have a video um, playlist actually called in uh, in seminary, and uh, in it I'm making the argument that you know male and female is a two billion year old category distinction that we have been yeah. evolving independently, and yeah. well, not completely independently obviously, but but um, <laughs> the male form and the female form, and part yeah. of the male form is that you guys don't reproduce as often, so you have more of a selection pressure, and that's the por- point of having a male class. Like that's why that's why there's an advantage. Because we could have okay. just continued doing horizontal gene transfer for everyone, like like prokaryotes. <laughs> yes. Um, but they yeah. they evolved this form, and, and it's it seems to be that one of the reasons is that that, that females are pretty much guaranteed to mate and reproduce, but males are like forty percent likely to reproduce, and so right. that creates a selection pressure towards um, evolving towards really motivating men to keep trying, mm-hmm. keep on trying, guys keep on trying mm-hmm. so it's, it's really oh, right. reinforcing and so it's like i feel like a lot of women are reluctant to develop this sort like a, a mental model of like your 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 basic male mm-hmm. like 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 minus intelligence minus humanity basic male like like what would males be right before they became human like yeah. evolutionarily that 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 evolution is still there and so so when you have problematic males who have brain problems or who have moral problems uh, which some would argue are always also a brain problem themselves when you have anti- that kind of antisocial behavior. You have you have impulse control issues, you have dementia. You are always going to have like a class of males who are just problematic sex predators. And I've actually said like for some of them, you really can't even say that they're criminals at that point. They are so defective. Yeah, it's they a difficult so one, isn't it? At that point, you just need to segregate them. Like you can't even, they're criminally insane. Like, yeah, you, just you execute forget. them all. Yeah, it's it, it becomes like a probably a phenomenology of of addict not probably but like like you get you get addictive pathology too where it's just like once they've been allowed to be sex predators long enough it changes their brain. Yeah, that's and such a have genetic factors that predispose them to that. Like, um, yeah, the 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 animals evolving to have specific reproductive strategies based on uh, like running in and just jumping on the female really quickly. I was just going to say rough. that like it's difficult, isn't it, when you look at a nature program and it's basically all rape. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's 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 like and and so we have to have some compassion for somebody who who that that's part. We, like there are at least some men like that where where they are so, or they were perfectly good guys and then they had a head injury and after that the problematic sex predator side of them that was built into their biology that they were able to overcome before the injury, mm. you know that comes out, and it's not that they're a bad person now, you know I really mm. care about brain injuries, like yeah. it really it really can create some problematic behavior and the person with the injury needs to be protected from the behavior because because it's not fair to just expect them to be able to not do it yeah it doesn't mean that they're bad or should be treated like sorry no no i really do care about <laughs> oh that's fine yeah I'm very passionate because it's been very been very um salient for my life yeah. trying to come to terms with how how a brain injury could cause problematic behavior in somebody i cared about that just didn't make sense but it was predictable and it's like oh, it's sorry. hard it's hard to come to terms with with someone someone 
who knows better, who doesn't want to be that person who sometimes is, is still going to say and do hurtful things just because they have an injury. And, and yeah. um, it's Jesus, it's, I'm sorry. Um, I, I can't imagine what that's like. I guess it's similar to having knowing someone with dementia or Parkinson's where they're there one minute and not the next. Yeah, no, it's it's quite similar. It's 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 just something something in their judgment area just like clicked, but didn't quite click right, and they thought that that it was the right approach. And it's it's hard to keep, like it's hard. Um, and then some disorders are are comically like like difficult to um, get the person to even be aware of, even if they could work on it. Like there's, yeah. there's knowing that there's an evolutionary quirk where the right side of your brain, if you have an injury there, you're much less able to um, become aware of the injury. And so they have much worse prognosis, right hemisphere disorders. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a right hemisphere injury, you can lose your left half of your sensory processing ability. But a left hemisphere injury won't do the same thing to the right half because of just Why? evolution. Um, because the right half is processed by both sides of your brain. Oh, and but the, the left, left side is only processed by the right side. So so the right, a right head hemisphere injury in some ways, it's like the person can't feel the injury. Like if, if everything feels fine. They'll draw a mm. clock, but only draw part of the clock. Wow. And, and you can't convince them. They'll only eat half of their food on their plate, and you have to physically turn the plate or they'll starve to death. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, the, the brain crazy. is a fascinating thing. Yeah. And so it's um, like, I, I, I don't think that someone, that the, even, even a male who has, a man who has, has very, very problematic, like sexually predatory behavior, I don't think it's automatically some, like, you know, they still have value as a community member. And we need to have a policy that can predict that that some men, some some men will end up there through no fault of their own, and they need to yeah. be protected. And and right now we have a policy that wants to put such men in women's prisons. What do they think is going to happen? Jesus, it's not fair to those men either. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I was I was going to speak to you about that as well. Obviously, um, we've seen it's, it here. It has lost its mind. Yeah. Did you hear uh, about the twenty-six-year-old they want to put in the girls' prison? Oh, in California. Yeah. 26-year-old male predator of girls, and they want to put him in the girls' prison because he was 17 when he committed the crime. And so California has a law that, like, if you're already in prison, you can't be transferred to the adult prison just because you turned 18. You have to be allowed to finish your sentence. But he's not in prison. He's 26. He's not in prison. What do you... <laughs> so they're going to put him into a prison that he's not currently in, and he's never been in, and it's going to be the girls' one because now he identifies as a female. I feel like everyone's lost their mind. It's what happens when you start believing sometimes males can be females. It's what happens. You, 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 you. I just debunked this woman who is a, a Carol Hooven, Harvard evolutionary biologist, wrote a book on testosterone signaling, and she came up with an explanation for why a particular genetic disorder couldn't exist in somebody with an XX karyotype that was just wrong. And uh, it was wrong for an obvious reason, which is that 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 a genetic disorder can be a mutation, and it isn't always inherited from a parent who has the disorder. It can happen; yeah. it can be a mutation even if the parent doesn't have it. It's like you should know that. And so I just commented that, and, and she immediately, of course, said I was right. I was obviously right. Um, and so it's like you obviously have the background knowledge and education to have reasoned this out, but you were reasoning towards a particular predetermined religious outcome, and so you you worked backwards from there. This felt truthy, so you published it. I think it's absurd. They're, they're, they've completely. And so as soon as I pointed it out to her, she was able to, you know, rediscover the logical informed side of her brain and recognize correctness. But, um, but isn't that crazy? Because you think that she would either just ignore you because she wanted to do that paper or it's funny because she's also been called a turf for saying oh. sex is real, but she's also defended liar Thomas as someone who's not, not breaking the rules. So therefore he's who's not doing liar Thomas. Wrong. Uh, so, so I call him Liar Thomas. He is, his also goes by Leah Thomas. He's a the U Penn swimmer, who is uh, yes, uh, yeah, in, yeah. swimming as a female. Um, and and there have been a few articles coming out recently of of the swimmers, uh, the teammates, the female teammates, talking about how like they're literally being traumatized by being forced to interact with them in order to compete uh, in in this capacity. And that U Penn's response has been to give them mental health services. And it's just like. <laughs> We, how do we deal with this? Like when the Olympics are saying, yeah, come on down, come on down, big boy. You could take all of the women's mm -hmm. things you want. Wait, people are, they, they, they don't, I guess they don't care enough about women's sports to actually look up statistics and figure out that, that um, there's a, a fantastic website. I, I believe it's boys versus women.com mm -hmm. 
uh, and, and it uh, compares the top athletic records for 15 year old boys to. I've seen, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. yeah. That's which amazing. Tells you that, that no matter, like, even, even males at the very, very beginning of their uh, mature maleness, manhood, mm -hmm. with very little testosterone, very little time to have trained, are still outperforming women with infinite training and, and infinite developmental time who are fully developed. Like, that, that tells you that, that women are never going to be competitive against men. This is never yeah, just... and, and and I think a lot of feminists have, and have historically almost been too embarrassed to admit that, which is perplexes me. Uh... Uh, I, I think like we we have we we have to stay within the bounds of reality. Like if you if you just begin lying about basic facts, mm -hmm. then you just become a lunatic. You're no longer an activist or somebody that's taking someone's side. You're just a liar. So we're 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 two <coughs> fundamentally different species. Uh, we're as close to different species as you can get while still being the same species. You know, it's, right. it's, 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 it, the, the distinction is, is 2 billion years old. And so the idea that we're ever going to nail it down to one trait that we can just correct and that now it's fair. Now it's fair to let the males compete against the females. Maybe what, what if we, what if we only let athletes compete when they're not taking drugs? How about we have that rule? If they're, if they're not taking performance altering drugs. I remember yeah. when we didn't let athletes compete when they had to take drugs because that gives you an advantage, even though supposedly, you know, they're taking these drugs and they claim that it's only giving them disadvantages. I don't know that that's true. There's a lot of sports. Estrogen does a lot of things. I don't know that this isn't giving you an advantage. Maybe it yeah. is. Maybe yeah. men's become better on estrogen. I don't know. Who well, there's quite a few. Just there's a few differences on there that people, have, people mm -hmm. have pointed out. So I think... Uh, Obviously, testosterone gives you stronger bones, but then estrogen does something good for men. I can't remember mm. what it is. Uh, my understanding is one thing is that estrogen is the most important uh, hormone for bone mineralization in, in both sexes. Right. Um, yes. No, you, yeah, no, that, that's right. Uh, I think it was Joe Rogan that said for, that. Uh, um, well, I wonder why this is part of why, how, how males grow taller is that um, uh, est estrogen is what causes the bone caps to fuse. So. All right. Um, yeah, so I assume that's part of why Jazz is as short as he is, even though he's on puberty blockers, which puberty blockers are often given, uh, not often, but but have been prescribed for uh, to make them grow taller because they yeah, prevent bone caps from fusing by not giving them the hormones. Oh, I see. Speaking of Jazz, <laughs> bless you. <laughs> oh, thanks. Bless you again. <laughs> um, I'll let you regain your composure. <laughs> <laughs> I turned a little pink. How did you start your kind of social media career? So I started uh, in about December of 2020. So it was COVID. You know, I was it was uh, kind of isolated and just, just living and doing going doing work online and staying at home all the time because of you know the vaccines hadn't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And so I just, a friend of mine encouraged me to get to TikTok. I'd also uh, lost someone. So I was trying to re or, uh, occupy my time. And uh, yeah, so I just kind of started posting and I, I liked that. And then I started uh, um, making videos about languages. Um, so like one minute, like here's, here's, here's like eight facts about Turkish or something, mm -hmm. you know, uh, trying to start to, to, to teach um, language categories you know, more by, by example. Um, and uh, that turned into talking one, making a lot of videos about Turkish politics because they have a very strange situation with article 301, which is their, a, a law forbidding uh, criticizing Turkishness. Uh, and they've wow. had it for about 15 years. And so there's now a generation of Turks who grew up without free speech and without Turkishness being criticized. And so the mildest things will, will anger Turkish Turks on TikTok, TikTok Turks. <laughs> and the algorithm will route to them. Yeah. And so I refer to Turkey as having a history of being an imperialist country, and and as an explanation of why it affects the other languages in such in the region to the point that they're called Turkic languages. Hmm. Apparently, you're not allowed to say that Turkey was imperialist. How dare you? Oh. It's called the empire. Wow. It's called the Ottoman Empire. Yeah, I feel like they were one of the longest empires we've ever known. <laughs> Weren't they? Like the Ottoman Empire goes back <laughs> really old, like six hundred. Yeah, AD, I think like, like... like way before the British Empire. Yeah. Um, but it, it felt okay, so... it felt insulting, and they're used to not liking insulting. 
Yeah. It's a, I think people from America forget that freedom of speech is so rare. Like, mm-hmm. it, we don't really have freedom of speech in this country. Like, there's a lot of things that you would say mm-hmm. that would get you thrown in jail. Mm. That you could say things about trans people that would get you a visit from the police. Yeah, I've heard about some of the high, higher profile cases. I can't even, I can't even imagine. I, I definitely like, I had, I had a brief moment of like, oh, it would be fun to move to Turf Island. No, no, I would. Same reason I, I, I lived it. I did a semester abroad in Turkey in college, and and mo- had yeah. most of a Turkish minor. Um, I don't feel like I can go back there until they get rid of Article Three Hundred One because I've criticized them. Yeah. Yeah, America is, you know, I know you guys have your problems and there's so many different opinions. Um, mm-hmm. But man, you guys have the basics down pretty bloody well. Like, I know there's a lot of things that need work, but some of those basics a lot of countries don't have. And, you know, we're, we're probably they, 10 years... Uh, relied heavily on the Iroquois system of government. Uh, the what, structure. sorry? The Iroquois system of government. What's uh, that? The, founding, the, the Iroquois are a Native American uh, a group of nations from the Northeast. Okay. Okay. Um, and and so there they had a a, a confederacy system of mul- of five and then later six member nations uh, that that was not like other places and the founding fathers especially Ben Franklin like famously piled around with them oh, um, okay and it, it it very much that's our our state system federal state system it relies a lot on on influence from that which is why we I think I imagine part of why we have some things that other people don't seem to have was that it originated on this continent. Mm. Well, whatever it was, it's good, and you should hang on to it as best as you can because it's amazing how much you miss it when you go away from America. Mm. I think Americans take a lot for granted. I know that's a horrible thing sometimes to to hear because you kind of think you don't know about the bad side about living here or whatever. I get that, but there's an awful lot of there's an awful lot of good, and I think we're so close to being when China becomes the, they they say that in. 13 to 15 years, China is going to be twice as powerful and twice as wealthy as the US has ever been. Wow. And I, and I think when that happens, everything will change. Like there's there's going to be no petrodollar, no American printing money and having their allies, you know, help them pay it back by buying energy using the American dollar because mm-hmm. China will just come along and say, well, we'll lend it to you for a tenth of the price. And that will mean that, sadly, American influence will wane. And um, when that happens, yeah. so will American culture. But I do think that one thing, <laughs> sadly or good, that you might see is uh, a lot of these topics that are sort of irritating people. Irritating is too light a word, but the, the, the trans thing, mm. that's not going to stick around. I, I mm-hmm. don't think... I, I do feel like see... it's a distraction. It, it, it feels like there's policies that are aimed at weakening the American public, and then one, one, one would be the changes to food, which have promoted so much obesity. I feel like that is a, a direct attack. Uh, I feel yeah. like, uh, so there's there's that, there's the trans situation, um, which is, is, of course, trying to kneecap a generation. Yep. Uh, and then uh, finally, there's the uh, importation of goods that are, are designed to rapidly break, and just, just how they're, they're flooding the market, and they're cheap. And I feel like a lot of people have forgotten what quality even is like what it's like to yeah. have something that was designed to last. Yeah, exactly. And now some people almost call it offensive if somebody says, I want to buy something that's made in America. I feel like some people think that that's an offensive thing to say. Like yeah. you're almost being xenophobic. And it's yeah, like, like, no, like, the, like there's no difference between countries. And yeah. Countries. yeah. Like, but that's interesting that you said that, actually. I hadn't even thought of that, the, the kind of destroying american manufacturing and replacing it with things that aren't going to last beyond the rise mm-hmm. of china yeah and that, that impoverish us so yeah. have to buy buy new ones as they break um, yeah. and, and and the the disruption of because uh, the, the trends a lot of that is too is it's about uh disruption of cultural transmission of knowledge and practices uh, okay. when you attack gender roles and expectations you're, you're attacking cultural transmission of knowledge and practices which is bound up in gender gendered exchanges it's not all about mating rituals it's not all about oppression there's also thoughts that they have and knowledge that's that's incorporated knowledge that, that might not be even be visible to us but which is, is very like um for instance uh, you know the, the the example i like to go to is you know Pr- uh, prometheus having his liver eaten out and the liver regenerated oh yeah like, like, like that, that nice. that's some very significant biological like knowledge 
like your liver does regenerate as, as I'm sure you're aware. And so, and that's embedded in a myth. And so, so if we had to find that myth as, as sacrilegious and just like stop teaching it because it was, it was transphobic, you know, we've lost knowledge there that we might not have just stumbled upon again if, if we didn't have modern medical medicine and it was, we were just relying on that myth to keep that knowledge present because of some other disruption. So it's like, we don't, we don't know what's happening by, by stigmatizing any culture that has gendered expectations, which is all of them. Mm.